Malachi from South London, I did not jeet you. You just nyam my batty and went home. Don't try to tell your guys I jeeted you, you know. Your own guys don't rate you, sis. You're work class. Go get a job. Go get a job, sis. Your own guys don't rate you. They're here telling me, oh, he's saying he jeeted you. Are you f***ing mad? Are you f***ing mad? I made you nyam my batty and go home. You didn't even get to nyam the cooch. I made you nyam my asshole. It don't even feel good. S***y mouth. See, you just, you just ch*** it. That's why. Okay, so this woman went viral on TikTok for exposing an escapade that she had with a man um, at some point. And basically, this video went so viral that she ended up um, being called onto a platform for an interview. And I had to bring this conversation to you guys. So we're going to watch the video together and I'm going to pause and play and let you guys know my, uh, you know, complete thoughts and feelings about this whole situation. Welcome to Off The Record, a platform where individuals come to speak their truth, discuss their thoughts and own their stories. We're going to be having candid conversations, dissecting various events, asking the questions we're all eager to know and hopefully coming to graceful conclusions. I am your host, Mire Oni, the one and only. Let's get into it. Today we are joined by Tamelo, a young lady who went viral online for causing quite a stir by exposing a young man who performed analingus on her. It has been quite the story. Tamelo, would you like to join us? Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. What do I call you? Miss Troublemaker? Thanos. Miss Thanos. Thanos of the UK. Thanos of the UK. Yes. Is that what you've dubbed yourself? That is my official title. That's your official title. <laughs> the oh public have decided. You said I don't, I want problems always. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I for mean, how me. was your journey in? It was a bit long, but I'm here. Where are you coming from? Bristol. Bristol. Wow. Well, tell us a bit more about yourself, apart from being, you know, a Thanos of the UK. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about you. Well, I'm 18. You are 18 years old. Yeah. Wow, your baby. Compared to me, anyway. But yeah, tell <laughs> us more. Tell us more. I'm 18. I'm from Bristol. Um. What do you do for a living? What do I do? <laughs> do I even have, I, I don't know. You don't know. Are you working at the moment? Are you in um, college or uni or anything like that? Um, I don't know. You don't know? No. You don't know if what you do for a living? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. What I do for a living well, I, maybe we'll get into that. Maybe we'll yeah, get into that. Later. Okay, cool. So <laughs> who, do, who do you live with at the moment? Are you, do you live alone? Alone. You live alone? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. When you're recording all of your videos, there's nobody with you. You're just like, cause you're, By your myself. videos are quite loud. Like you're shouting. A lot of people have said that. Yeah, no, in your videos, you are quite, you know, expressive is the word that I would use. <laughs> But anyway, let's move on from that. So you're here because you exposed a young man called Malachi online. Can you start by telling us who Malachi is? Like who exactly he is? Like who is he to you? I wouldn't say he was my boyfriend. Okay. That's a lie. Yeah. He's an arrangement. Elaborate. What does arrangement mean? A situationship. Um, so how did you and Malachi meet? We actually met on a street corner. Like we just bumped into each other. Okay. In Lewisham. In Lewisham. So do you come to the um, down to London quite often? No, like no. So how? Why were you in Lewisham? I was having an AP. What's an AP? An apartment. Oh, okay. Yes. Why were you having an apartment? I just have them sometimes. Okay. So you were just happened to be in 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 Lewisham, and yes. you happened to meet this guy called Malachi. Yes. And because you were in an AP. Yes. So, so we were what was the interaction? To the corner shop. Okay, and then what happened? So I was like, yo. Tell me a bit more, like go a bit more into the story. He was like, yo. Yeah. I was like, hi. And then? I was like, you're Leng, you know? Mm hmm I was like, thanks. So I was like, what's your snap? Put it in his phone. And that's how you guys met. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, what was the progression from you guys meeting on that street in Lewisham to then him performing these acts on you? How did you get from A to B? 
one day we came on the phone mm -hmm. and he was like, like, I just have weird fetishes that I can't tell anyone about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, tell me. And he told me that as well as like belly button stuff. Likes, belly button stuff? What do you mean? Like sometimes he likes licking belly buttons and stuff. Okay. Apart from that, he likes eating. Okay, cool. Um, so obviously you went online and you exposed him and you said he, he's lying about he, him having sex with you. He only performs analingus on you. Can you please explain why you came online to expose him? What was the, the um, timeline that happened for you to expose him? I wanted his friend. You wanted his friend? Right. So I wanted his friend. So obviously his friends decided to do a CRB on me. Mm-hmm. This was, this started back in January. The saga started in January. First, he tried to say we dated. That got shut down. Then he said he was joking. I was like, cool. Second time, his second strike was in February. That was his second strike. He was like, oh, like I cheated her, blah, 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 blah. Can you just, for people that, you know, I'm a lot older than you. I don't actually know what cheating means. Can you please explain what that is? To have sex. Okay, so yeah. he, he lied and said that you had Sex. sex, yeah. But you didn't have sex with him? There was no sex. Okay. And then after that, he, he said it twice. Yes. So he said it that time in February. And then this time when I heard it, like, his friend came on the phone and he was like, I'm bothered, like, my guy keeps saying he cheated you. So mm. I don't know if I can take you serious. And that really provoked me. And that's why you came online to talk yeah. about it? I, I didn't expect it to go so far. I expected him and his friends to see it. Ah, uh, fair enough. Before, before we get any further down, l let me just analyze this part, okay? 18-year-old young woman meets a guy just walking down the street, you know, maybe just he tried to holler at her, whatever the case is. They exchange information, and, you know, in very short matter of time, it goes into intimacy. Then the girl realizes that, He's actually, I guess, not the cute one out the crew or not the hottest one out the crew. And she wants his friend. And when the guys get together in dialogue about the situation that happened, she doesn't like the dialogue that takes place. And so then she jumps on the Internet and tries to expose him or humiliate him is, is the better word. And, uh, you know, expose the things that they did. The thing is, is that. What the guy said to his friend is not necessarily wrong. He's not wrong. That was an intimate act that the two of you shared together. So he's telling his boy, hey, we had an intimate act that we shared together, whether, whether it is, you know, actual intimacy where, you know, it's the two of you guys, you know, him parking the car in the garage or whether it is anything that's of the sort. It's the fact that you guys shared um, a bed at some point. How are you mad that he said that? Why aren't you mad that you did that? If that's the case that you wanted to be with his friend, why aren't you mad like, man, I should have never done that. That way I would have had a chance with an actual person that I'm actually interested in. That's not even where the, where the mind frame is. The mind frame is, oh, well, you know, I'm just mad that he told, why is he telling people this and why is he telling people that? And then you have no problem telling everybody else what the actions really were. And again, at 18, so young, like you have no idea the ramifications of all this stuff that's being exposed on the internet by you. Let's keep watching, y'all. You claim that he begged to perform this act on you. How did, how did that come about? We were in a hotel room mm -hmm. and then he was like, oh, can I try something on you? And I was like, what? He's told me, I was like, how much do you have? Sorry, pause. <laughs> He's told you what he wanted to do and you asked how much does he have? Correct. Okay, I'm going to put a pin in that and come back to that later, okay? <laughs> so you said how much do you have and then what happened next? He was like, oh, like right now I only got four bills. I was like, we can make that work mm -hmm. because you're not about to harass my asshole for free. Okay. I... Okay. Um, so after he's giving you the money or you guys have done whatever, did he pay before or after? He had like, to pay before. Oh. He 
can't pay. No, that's not an option. He has to pay before. Before, yes, okay. before the service. Do you have proof of him paying? No, because he's he's from Lewisham. They what don't does that really mean? have bank accounts. He paid in cash. Yes. He paid in cash. What was part of this transaction? What does he get for four hundred pounds? He gets to eat my bum. Yeah. And wank himself off. That's it. That's it. So he paid four hundred pounds to perform this act on you and to do whatever he wanted to do to himself. Why didn't you go the full to the full extent with him? I had a bit of like a bay at the time, so it wasn't appropriate. You had a bay at the time. A little bit. A little a, bit. A little bit of a bay. Girl, what does that mean? Like I was speaking to someone else. Yeah. So it wasn't appropriate for me and him to have sex. But it was appropriate for him to eat your bum. That's business. You keep talking about business and no one's gonna eat your bum. I'm confused, okay? I, so you were you were basically on in the talking stage with somebody and then you performed a this act with somebody else but you didn't want to go the full way because of the fact that you were talking to somebody and then you guys wonder why um, men constantly says they're done with relationships, they're done with women and why they just call you at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning um, you know, for you to come in the in the late night to do whatever it is that you got to do to be the booty call, and then they just keep it pushing and focus on their purpose, and you wonder why. Because there are men who think that they are in in a space that they're going to be having like a, a good relationship with a good girl. The whole time, the same girl is over here, you know, paying people for certain transactions. I'm sorry, getting paid for certain transactions. And he's over here just thinking like, oh, yeah, you know, she's all mine. She seems like a good girl. She's focused on me. This is why I, I love the fact that the Internet is the way it is, because it allows people the opportunity to expose themselves as this as this young woman is doing as well, so that people can see the track record so that you could just scroll on, on, on TikTok and you can find out the woman's backstory because they are jumping on the internet to expose themselves for the opportunity of, of um, clout or likes or, uh, you know, quick fame. This is what I love about the internet. Without paying, like, girl, <laughs> what is, what's your profession? Because to me, it's giving prostitution. Hmm. We got to call a spade a spade because transactions of monetary gain for sexual acts by definition is prostitution. And that's what you're doing here. I don't think I do it on a wide scale. It's so selective. You so you do prostitution on a selective scale? Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so just to clarify. Sorry, Dad. So just to clarify, you're a part time prostitute. Yes. Wow. Okay. How did we get there? What What has led an 18-year-old woman to be a part-time prostitute? I don't know. I don't really see it as prostitution. I see it as if you want something from me and pay. just that, you should pay. Was that your first time getting money for sexual acts or was this something that you've been doing for a, a, a while? I wouldn't say no. I used to let boys suck my toes for money. Okay. Why do you feel like you've gotten into this business of um, having transactions for sexual favours? How did this come about? Why has this come about? I just realised men are a bit weird mm -hmm. and some of them should be taken advantage of. Okay. So if they want to use me, mm -hmm. I'll use you first. You're a very interested young woman. Men are weird? Ma'am, what you're doing is very strange, okay? What you're doing is very strange. You're talking to somebody, then you're meeting up with somebody else and having him pay for something, and then after that person that, I guess, the person you were talking to didn't work out, and then after the guy paid for the whatever transaction, you realize that you want to be with his friend, and, and so now you expose, like, what you're doing is very weird. If we want to be, if we want to go tit for tat, let's just be honest about it. And the thing is, is that people can do whatever they want to do intimately, whatever, you know, serves them, whatever makes them happy, whatever makes them kick, do you, do what you got to do. It don't buy, that's had nothing to do with me. But you see, when strangers are, are venturing off into certain waters with people that they do not know, I find it 
it, it's not only harmful, it's gross. Okay, I'm just being honest. You don't know this person from anywhere. And, uh, you know, whether you are performing the act or receiving the act, you don't know anything about this person. You don't know what they got. You don't know what they don't got. You don't know anything. And to think that you can always walk away unfazed and make a quick buck and that nothing will, you know, be stuck with you for the rest of your life after making these decisions is not reality. That's for sure. So you put on your um, story, your price list is <laughs> different. <laughs> Girl, you put your price list of different, um, I don't even know what to say, different acts that you can be you performed saw that. on you. I did. Girl, I told you I watched all your things. You put Ooh. on your story different things of what people can do to you. So £500 for eating your bum, £400 for eating your front vagina like is that your standard going rate or is you've that boosted sounds it really up? low i think 550 was to eat my bum mm. 650 to eat my vagina okay um there's a 50 pound late fee and 200 pounds extra for video evidence so do you have a booking system for this no i was actually in? looking for a manager to help me manage my bookings at the moment to manage your part-time prostitution i might make it full-time Girl, uh, man, I think, did you mean pimp? <laughs> because <laughs> manager is not necessarily the word or the verbiage that should be used. Did you mean to say pimp? Because I think that's what you meant. You might make it full time. Is it lucrative? Is it paying well? <laughs> I think it's paying well. well. Okay. So what's your clientele? My clientele. Aside from Malachi. This is what's really weird. Most people would think like the young successful men wouldn't pay for this like because mm -hmm. they can get women easily mm -hmm. that's my main clientele really when you say young successful what demographic are we talking rappers 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 as in up and coming or established 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 rappers are messaging you to eat your ass. i just want to make sure we're clear on that yes yes but they also hit me with ndas i mean that's very convenient <laughs> for you to say <laughs> I mean, come on. Very convenient. Okay, cool. So you've been hit up by established rappers who want to eat your Only three. Only, th only, only three. Yes. One, two, three rappers have yes. hit, your up, hit you up to eat your bum. Yes. Did you charge these rappers or do they get a premium service or like... Of course they get charged. If anything, they get charged more. They get charged more. Yes. So what's the criteria? What's the... Not criteria, what's the bracket that they get in charged? Maybe 1,500 to 2,000, because they can afford it. Okay, so when you're charging them up to 2,000 pounds, do they get the full ride? Do they get to enjoy you sexually, or is it just to eat your ass? They don't get to enjoy me sexually. Oh, so you don't have sex with any of these clients, it's just no. ass eating? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so is this like an OnlyFans type thing? I was thinking of starting that. Okay. But I just don't have the heart. You don't have the heart to start it, but you have the heart to tell everyone you're a part-time prostitute. Sis. <laughs> We're going to need well. to make it make sense. I might as well. You might this. as well go full, full force if you're telling the whole world that, you know, because this is going on YouTube, you know. So, okay, let me just say this. This girl could be lying, okay? She could be absolutely making up this stuff to make herself seem as though she is getting... Um, you know, certain people to do certain things so that it will amp up um, that other people will believe it. And so they'll want to now pay to see what these quote unquote people are experiencing. She could be telling the truth because there's people out there who do some 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 things just for the thrill of it. But the whole point is that, you know, the fact that she is so openly talking about it and has no problem um saying whatever it is at such a young age in my personal opinion it shows that she is at a space that she doesn't really understand that in 10 20 30 years the ramifications of what might happen in my opinion it also shows her 
full level of influence. And based on the things that she's saying and the way in which she's speaking, there's no one that can tell me any different that she has not been influenced by music, by hip hop culture, by, you know, certain certain type of uh, people who sing certain songs about like, you know, you have to have money and put your money up before you can do this and do that. There's no way that anybody can convince me any different. The same way that, you know, you're all the way in the UK and you're talking about, yes, sis, sis, sis. Like the same, it, it, to me, it's giving very much follower. That's what it's giving to me. One thing I don't agree with is that, you know, this is the same interviewer that she, when the girl went on stage with Omale, she went on this platform and did her whole interview with her. Um, but in my personal opinion, the influence, the the person who's doing the interview, I don't think that she needs to give her any more bright ideas. I don't think she needs to tell her, well, you might as well go on this or you might as well do that. Well, you might as well. I don't think this girl needs any more influence ideas because it's a bad habit that we don't want to see perpetuated. So even just saying like, oh, you might as well. I understand the thought process as to why she's saying that, but I would not be wanting to give anybody again any bright ideas to go towards that direction. Do you know that? Yes. So you might as well start the OnlyFans if that's the case. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. In the UK, we are quite prudish. This type of information isn't things that people tend to actually speak about. People keep their sexual lives quite private. Why did you want to come online and tell everybody on the World Wide Web that Malachi performed Analingus on you? Um, mainly because I don't care what okay. anyone else thinks. Secondly, I didn't expect it to go so far. Okay. I really expected it to circle within London, mm -hmm. South London only. Mm -hmm. His friends would see it and disgrace him. Okay, so you didn't think that in this no. viral community that you saying, Malika, you at my ass would not go viral? No, because like I've been a sh talker for years. Like I talk crap all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I speak about many subjects. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go viral, okay. it just stays within my TikTok community. But as you can imagine, this is very controversial. This is like something that is, I think Analingus is something that is quite new in the UK. People might have been doing it for years, but people speaking about it openly is quite new. So obviously you coming online and speaking about that is gonna grab people's attention, especially on TikTok where it's like, things go viral like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you didn't think about that? That never came into play? No, when no? I made it, I was just in a moment of, let me just be petty. Like, let me just get at him. Mm -hmm. Are you at all concerned about how you're being portrayed online? No. No, why are you not concerned? Because the internet is just a facade. Like, people come on the internet to escape the reality about themselves. Like, a lot of people who are behind the screens laughing, oh, look at her, she's a prostitute. They're prostitutes themselves. They just don't accept the title. Okay, so you've, you're basically saying, I've accepted who I am yeah. and I'm gonna make a living off of this, yes. essentially. Say, thinking, having the idea, what she's saying is true. There are a lot of people who point the finger, laugh, judge, and, and make comments, um, especially in places like TikTok. TikTok is one of the most disgusting, nastiest places when it comes to um, you know, people just belittling people for no reason. There's women who are bashing the woman, Nara Smith, because she cooks for her husband and her kids every day. And she's literally not doing or saying anything to anybody. They're just miserable. So what she's saying is partly true. However, having the mindset to think that, um, you know, a lot of women or a lot of people who are condemning you are actually doing what you're doing themselves is not true. <laughs> like that's I just want to be clear about that. That's not true. There are people who are looking from the outside who are holding you accountable for the things that you're saying because of the effect it's having on a lot of other women or younger women. So that's not true. Thinking that like, oh, well, you know, everybody who's saying it, they've already done it or they've done something similar. That's not really the facts. That's not the facts. That's what you're saying, yeah? What have your friends said about this? They about know the I'm fact mad. They know you're mad. They know I'm mad. So have they advised you to be like, girl, maybe chill out? Or they just, how, how is that conversation going with your friends and your family? My, my friends, their main advice is this type of attention you've got, make something of it. Don't try and make something of it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a career 
or something. What type of career can you do out of this? I could be a rapper. You could be a rapper? Yes. Okay, is that what the avenue that you're trying to go down? Because I did see that you were putting music on your story and things like that. I think so. Yeah? Yeah. So you have a plan, essentially. Yeah. So obviously you said that you're, you don't really care about how people perceive you, the internet is a facade, X, Y, Z. What about in the future? Because when you put things on the internet, there is a digital footprint and what about your children in the future, your potential husband, maybe a job, things like clients. Let's say for example, you do become a successful rapper. Maybe brands might not want to particularly work with you because of certain things that you say. Does that bother you at all? Do you think about that? No, look at Cardi B. How oh, did she start? That's she started very true. by talking shit. She said a lot mm -hmm. in her career. She got picked up by Love and Hip Hop, mm -hmm. then from there released Bodak Yellow. Mm -hmm. No one talks about the days where she used to sit on Instagram and talk crap. I love Cardi B, by the way. Didn't I just say that there, it, it's the influence and her falling behind somebody? So now we have it. Her blueprint is Cardi B. Think about that. This woman just said her blueprint is Cardi B. Men have to pay her for intimacy. She goes online and she exposes stuff and she just talks foolishness. And then, you know, her hopes is to now follow in her footsteps and become a rapper. This is why it's so vital that we understand how much weight we hold when we tell our own stories, when we expose certain things, when we talk about different subjects, because now somebody's child wants to follow in your footsteps and do the things that you did, no matter how difficult it was, no matter if you escaped certain things or certain try, um, you know, trials or hardships or whatever the case. She's following you because the life that you live right now looks glamorous. This is why I think it's so important that when people go through things that they tell the full story, not the fact that they were able to buy this and buy that and they were able to do this. No, talk about the nights that you were afraid. Talk about the things that could have gone wrong. Talk about those things so that younger girls can see that. And understand that, no, the grass isn't always green. Sometimes it's brown. Sometimes it ain't no grass. It's so vital that we have those full-fledged conversations, not half-truths. Not the piece of the story that makes it look a, look a certain way or glamorizes a certain lifestyle. That's so heartbreaking to me. Like, hearing that just, like, broke my heart. Oh, look at her. Look at what she did. Look at, to me, this girl looks like the definition of a child who um, just did whatever it is that she wanted to do. Nobody couldn't tell her nothing. Nobody couldn't talk to her. Nobody couldn't steer her in any, in any certain way. You know, the fact that she was saying, you know, sorry, dad, when she exposed her profession is very interesting to me because, you know, clearly it looks like the leadership or whoever was around, in my opinion, this looks like a, a girl who was raised by a single mother who was just moving and shaking and doing whatever it is, beating to her own drum. Maybe mama was too busy living her own life, doing her own thing, that she didn't have time to even focus on you. Tell you things, show you the ropes. This is my opinion. That's so heartbreaking. This girl, this girl literally looked and said, Cardi B. The same, the same person who her kids don't even listen to her music. Mm -hmm. But that's how she started. I totally agree, agree with you. But do you think that that space can be cultivated in the UK? Because remember, Cardi B's in America, their morals, everything that they stand for, even their culture is very different to the UK. In the UK, like I said, we're, we're a lot more prudish here. Yeah. So the, although everybody is doing these sexual acts, not everybody talks about it and everyone has a lot more to say. So do you think that that, even though that, that kind of timeline that you said with Cardi B is true, do you think that it can be reflected in the UK? Definitely. Only because people are quite shocked by me, mm -hmm. I believe. Because as you said, the UK is very prudish. Mm -hmm. I stand out. Mm -hmm. It's like, it makes people look at me. Mm -hmm. It makes owners of shows and 
people who have platforms want to speak to me, want me on their shows. Mm. So I think eventually it'll work out. Okay. I love that you're positive about it. That being said though, is this maybe an introduction to you, a persona that you're putting out as an introductory and then are you planning to keep this throughout your career or? I wouldn't say it's a persona. I would say this like, I'm exactly how I am on TikTok. Mm. I've only calmed myself down because I can't come here screaming at you, mm. answering the questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just not. Yeah, but this is just who you are. This it's is just who I be. am. Like I, I'm never gonna change and I'm never gonna get tired because it's just my personality. Obviously when people were online kind of getting at you, you were talking about the fact that your, your dad didn't do a good job raising you. Do you wanna elaborate on that? What did you mean? Uh, my dad was like in and out of my life. Mm -hmm. So there was never really that male proper figure. Mm -hmm. That may have contributed to how I am now, but either way, I don't know. There's whores with dads. That is true. So you f Some way, somehow, daddy always gotta be the one to blame. It can't be the parent that was in the house with you. It can't be the things that you were exposed to because even the one parent who was around was just allowing you to do your own thing. It can't be anything else. Somehow, some way, whether the dad was around, he wasn't around, he was, he was there, he wasn't there, he gave you enough love, he didn't give you enough love. No matter what the situation is, somehow, some way, the man is always to blame. Always. What a shocker. <laughs> feel like... Your dad not being a part of your life is what's led you to being a part-time prostitute. No, I feel like even if I had a dad, mm. if I choose to be a whore, that's nothing to do with him. People have two parents in their house and become serial I feel like you can have great parents and become a kid. Mm. Yeah. So why'd you bring it up then? What was your point of bringing it up then? If that's the case, if, if you don't feel like it had anything to do with your parents, why didn't you bring up both of your parents? And, and, and instead of that, why didn't you bring up any? Why didn't you just not bring up anyone? You purposely brought up your dad. To make him look like he did something wrong or he was inferior it's because of who he is that you are who you are. Why didn't you just take that same ownership instead of saying anything about your parents if you truly believe that it really had nothing to do with them? Why say that? Because again, this internal, you know, um, disdain for men stems from a long time ago, maybe from what your mom told you, maybe the women around, whoever. It always has to go back to it being a man's fault. Do you not feel any shame when you're talking about these things online? Like, are Do you... Do you not feel any shame? What would I feel shame about? It's like everyone sins in the darkness. Mm -hmm. I sin in daylight. But my sin is in the darkness, so I wouldn't have the shame. But That's you know point. that with, within yourself, and God knows that. So yeah. do you not feel any shame? I do, but it's not online. What have you done in your life? I wouldn't say that online. That's okay. the whole point. Okay. My point is with you, you're coming online and speaking but about... But what do guys know about you? What do you mean? Like men you may have been with in the past. Mm -hmm. What do they know about you? Whatever they know is between me and them. Well, is it? Because they go and tell their friends, which is exactly why I went out at Malachi. Yeah, but whatever I've discussed with whoever I've been with and they've told their friends, it's not being discussed by over 10 million people online. Yeah, but that could easily happen. Say, say that person went and told one of their friends and their friends did a story time on TikTok mm -hmm. and it's about you. That could easily blow up. But they wouldn't know it's about me. Well, they could if they said your name. Basically, to answer this question, you have no shame. Why do you keep saying that? I'm asking you a question. It's like you're trying to get a rise out of me. What do you mean? It's like you're trying to provoke me. I'm not trying to provoke you. I'm just trying to ask and articulate Are the fact like that you ain't got shame. Are you me because you're old? Old? Like, you your mean? generation wouldn't really understand my generation. We're very far apart. <laughs> okay. I read somewhere you're like 48. 48? Well, I look damn good for 48, if that's you the case. You do. I'll give you that. You do. Yeah. But that doesn't change the fact that after rave, when you was 18, you was probably getting f***ed out behind bins. You don't know me, so I'm going to excuse I myself. I am going to excuse myself Remember, for a sec. Remember, you need me here. Okay. That's fine. Darling. Slay goodas. Give it to them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cougar. I'm sorry, but I have to be really honest. You see... When you are in a certain space that you're talking about very controversial things, you cannot ex expect everybody to agree with your lifestyle. 
this is exactly what the sisterhood does all the time. Like as soon as you go against the grain or as soon as you show that you're not with whatever it is that they're doing, then they do all the what did Kevin um Kevin Samuels call it? The sign language. The shame, insult, guilt needs to be right. They do all the above because their feelings are hurt. And to be honest, to me, that part of the interview exposed that she really did have shame because you were fine until she said that one trigger word. Once she said that word, it exposed that you probably do not feel good deep down in yourself. And that's why you're coming so hard at her. Because you tried to play tough. You try to act like, oh, I don't care. I'm not ashamed. I don't care. I don't get. Yeah, this is who I am. Yeah, this is what I do. But the minute that she said that one word, this, the, the switch flipped. Now you're insulting her. Now you're coming at her. Now you're trying to say all these things about her. Because you do feel a way. And I don't understand why the younger generation feels that you know nobody understands or nobody can see what's actually happened the problem is is that you're in it and you're being fed all of this nonsense and you're being lied to and you believe that to be truth while the people are looking and can see the game at play that you're falling into none of this stuff is new None of it is new. The difference is that there were different spaces of, of what younger um, kids could listen to and can see and can feed off of um, opposed to everything just being all in one. Like there was always Lil' Kim, Foxy, this, that, singing about all types of stuff. But then younger girls had their own music, their own way, their own things that they listened to. Now it's all conjoined into one. And now younger girls are being fed the message and taking heed to it when their brains are not even fully developed yet. So I don't know this whole, you know, now she's trying to ch ch like age shame the woman and this and that and, and, and you know, clown her out. And I, I think it's distasteful. This this same woman, when, when the girl went to the Omale concert, this same interviewer was holding that girl accountable as well. Well, what do you feel about this? Well, why did you do that? Well, how come you did this? That's what she wants to do. She's asking the nitty gritty. All she asked was, do you have any shame about what you're doing? All you had to say was, no, I don't have no shame. Because somebody who really didn't have shame would say that. But you, you came at her in a different way, which again, leads me to believe that you do have shame. Someone wants to attack me. Like, see, she's walked out her own interview. This is the Tamello show now. Thanos of the UK ran the host of her own platform, babe with me if you want. Does someone want to go get her? Honestly. But anyways. I love your dress. I love it. And your hair's nice. Thank you so much. It's probably for the older generation. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's giving senior. Okay. We're gonna have to keep it cute because I don't want to come out of character. I'm being professional. I don't want to get ignorant. I don't want to come to your level. Okay. So let's let's be, you know, like let's act like we have. But I don't, as you just said. That's why I said let's act. I don't act. We'll try. But I will actually because it's your show. Okay, darling. Kaisenat, let's talk about it. Let's talk about. How it. did you feel when he reached out to you? He didn't. What do you mean he didn't? There's a clip online of you shouting, like in many of your videos, and you're saying that Kai Sanat reached out, you're, you've made it, you're, you've gone clear. Okay. Did you see the response from Kai Sanat? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to take this moment to truly thank all the pawns in my game, that being the UK public, all the pawns in my game who believed me so, so freely. Believe me, I sat there and I thought, how can I take this to a different level? Because eventually the UK public is going to be sick of me. Kai Senna, biggest streamer in the world. These fools actually managed to get Kai Senna to address me publicly, whether it's negatively or not, whether he's saying I don't know her or not. Now people from his stream, there was probably 10 million people on that stream. Now people from his stream have came to find me and find me they did because my views on my account, my profile views went from 4 million to 8. Okay. So it boosted 4 million in 12 hours. It was all a game and they fell for it. So I just want to thank all the pawns in this game. So you're a liar? Um, to an extent. 
No, just yes or no, you're a liar. Yes. So then is it fair to say that this whole story is fake? No. This was just a way to boost my platform even further. Okay. So you mentioned earlier that you are a... Um, what's the word you used? You are a avid chat shitter. So is all of your story like lies? Is all your story times just you coming up with things to be popular online? No, because I'm not popular online. Okay. I'm, well, at I'm, the moment you are because you... No, you... but it's not popularity. It's more interest. I wouldn't okay. say I'm popular because popular is a word to be liked. Mm -hmm. I'm not liked. Okay. So I don't make stuff up just to be hated on. Everyone, everyone does not like me. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I've accepted that. Yeah. But you know. So then if you're coming up with more stories and things like that, would it be fair for us to say that all of the things that you're saying aren't factual? If you've passed all other exams but fell one, is it fair to say you're a dumb I don't know how to answer that question. But you're smart though. But you failed one exam. Are you now dumb? Does so that you're discredit basically everything saying else? One, one fake story doesn't discredit the rest of your stories. Exactly. So the rest of your stories are in fact true. Yes, I don't even think they're stories. Like, I don't think I've done like story times. I think it's more me calling people out. Okay. There was a clip that you made on your TikTok where you made a video and then you stitched your own video and said that you made things up. Is that another test that you failed? No, um, the Kai Senate one, that one is not true. The, in that video, I was more quoting the public. Like I was quoting what's going out on TikTok about me. Oh, okay. So it wasn't you saying that. No, oh, I wasn't saying, saying that lie. about myself. Okay. I was quoting the public. There have been a few Malachi's that have come out claiming to be the guys that performed Analingus on you. Have you got anything to say about that? I find it funny how people call me a clout chaser. Mm. Would we not consider them a clout chaser? 100%. It's just that the word clout has negative implications. Mm. Would we not consider anyone who posts on TikTok a clout chaser? Because they are posting, hoping to get likes, views, mm -hmm. comments. I think the public is just angry that I got the clout. Because there's a difference between chasing clout and having clout. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm chasing clout anymore. I think the clout has been caught. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say in regards to these Malachi's that are coming forward claiming that it's them? I would say, I'm not gonna hate on your grind. Do what you gotta do, but it just- I think that any person who comes online and is claiming to be this, this Malachi guy is humiliating themselves. Like that's so humiliating and disgusting. Like why would you even come online to try to prove that you're the guy who was doing all these things and talking about you like to lick belly buttons? Like that's so gross. Like why are you why are you trying to fit the narrative or fit into this character character of being this guy? Are you crazy? Like if y'all don't go sit down goes to show people can call me shameless but people will happily come out and be known as a guy who ate for 400 pounds got sent home just for a few likes and just to confirm none of them are the real malachi of course not so has the real malachi reached out to you has he of said anything course. what was that conversation like he was like i beg you please don't do this like don't post me and i didn't i'm not that i'm not that hateful uh, so that's why you haven't revealed who he actually is Yes, even if he didn't say that, as soon as I, it hit a certain amount of views, you now know that this is now public information. Me revealing who Malachi is, is me essentially ruining his life. The British public are literally just waiting. Everyone who's saying, oh, she's not saying who Malachi is, like they just wanna know who Malachi is exactly so they can harass him. Mm -hmm. I may have tough skin, he may not. There's a clip online um, of a young lady graphically having Analingus performed on her. Is this person you? No. No, okay, fair enough. You've been posting a lot of content. I think that you were posting every five seconds at one point. What do you plan on doing with this content? Like, how do you, how do you wanna use this to benefit yourself? I think I'm just seeing where it goes at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm taking all the opportunities which come to me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, thankful to be here, even though you're a bit bright, but. <laughs> yeah. You're beautiful, but like I can tell you was like, a in school like you I would have probably had a couple fights with you but... I'm I'm gonna just yeah just just move on because I don't want to say anything that I don't want to say let's be guided you even quoted me 
like I said, what do you plan on doing with this newfound fame that you've discovered, that you've gained? TikTok fame is one thing. Mm -hmm. TikTok fame, it's not real fame. Mm -hmm. I plan to turn it into real fame. And what would that fame look like to you? Notoriety. There's a difference between like having a bit of clout and having actual notoriety, like actually being, I don't know if I'll ever be a respected member of society, but I wanna be known. When I walk into rooms, I wanna be known. As what? That is a really good question. I wasn't even prepared for that. Mm. As what? Cause n right now, and not to be disrespectful, but a lot of people would notice you as a part-time prostitute. Okay. Is that a narrative that you want to change or are you happy for that to continuously be your story? Even if I wanted to change it, mm. if the public decide that you are a part-time prostitute, even if I didn't come on here and say this mm -hmm. myself, that's what they think. They're not going to change their mind. Mm -hmm. So whether they choose to see me as that or not, I just want to be known. Whatever they choose to know me as, as long as they know me, it's fine. So are you going to continuously keep telling us about your sexual escapades or... Is this going to be the last time? Are we going to hear more from you about your bedroom antics? Just depends who decides to be cheeky. You said you're a rapper. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about your rap career. What is that looking like? Are you in the studio? Are you creating music? Last year is when I was really doing rap, like seriously. Mm -hmm. I kind of lost the passion for it. Like a lot of people managed to take that away from me, take the passion of music away from me. So I feel like now that I have this platform, it'll be kind of stupid not to at least try and pursue that again. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what, that's all I have to say about that at the moment, because there's not much to say. Okay. I haven't done much, I haven't released anything. Fair enough, so you're, you're a nice person. I am a nice, I actually am a nice person. Oh. I'm just- I mean, this conversation would beg to differ, but- But it's because you're not a nice person. I'm an amazing person. Not to me. What did I say to you that wasn't nice? You're just quite judgmental. I didn't say anything judgmental. I you asked you a underlying question. hatred. What am I hating on? The fact that I still have youth. Tamela, it was lovely. You're wearing Clarks. These are not Clarks, darling. Check what your back. What are they? What are they? What are you wearing? Can we go through? Let's do a fit check with you. Okay. Pretty little thing. Mm-hmm. Pretty little thing. Mm hmm I think it's a sheen. Mm. That says it all. Um, that says it all what? Do you want to buy me a new outfit? No, I don't, darling. What are 18 year olds supposed to wear? You don't know about Sheen. And your, your buckle's undone on your shoes. Tomello, it was lovely. Well, it was interesting having you here on Off The Record. I wish you all the best in your career. Hopefully it works out the same way it did for Cardi B. If not, take care. Guys, it has been me, Mide Oni, the one and only, and this has been Off Don't The Record. Don't sign off as if it's your show, because you needed me here. It's been Tamelo from Bristol. Tamelo from Bristol, let me look at all cameras. Thank you, Off The Record. You can cut, by the way, she has nothing further to say. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for on joining Off us. The... You're not about to edit this out. It's been the Tomello show. Had I not been here, you'd have had fuck all to speak about. So thank you. You can cut here because I'm just going to keep interrupting you. You might as well do this in your own time. Oh, Jesus is good. And I thank God for growth. I don't know what to say here because do I give it back? I don't know what's going on here, guys. Keep your career, sis. You, yeah. you, at least you have one. Yeah. At least I have one. Yes. Thank you. That is very At 31, I'd expect that. Yeah. Hopefully, and by the time you're 31, you would have grown out of part-time prostitution as well. No, your no. mom's the one. She's definitely not. This is the thing, right? Whenever you're dealing with somebody who's ignorant, the lit, the la and, and somebody who's really young too. This girl is a teenager still. She's young. There's no need to go tit for tat. There's no need to internalize anything that she's saying. Like, in my personal opinion, whenever somebody is coming at you, you have to like look at the space of, of who's saying it like who who are you to me anything that you're saying is not going to hurt my feelings not going to you know make me feel no way it's not going to make me have to come off of my square like you don't know me you know you don't know me you're here for an interview let's just have the conversation you know and i think as an interviewer again it, it is important that you are honest about how you feel but it's also Im important that as an interviewer that you are just giving an, an unbiased you know conversation you're just sitting there neutral 
right? You're, you're Switzerland. You're not sitting there and trying to, you know, be in the conversation and try to, you know, expose all of your feelings. I think it is important to have important to have a neutral ground. That way you can, you know, receive the information. Somebody can hear you. When it comes to the part about shame, I still don't think that the woman said anything wrong. She asked her a simple question and it went left. I think if the young woman felt offended, she could have said, you know, well, I, I wasn't meaning to offend you. I was I was simply asking you a question based off of the things that I've seen. I wanted to know if this is how you feel. Point blank, period. Let's just keep it moving. But going tit for tat and trying to have the last word and at least to have a career and stuff like that. I mean, she's a young girl. She's going to she's going to, you know, at that point, you're, you're letting her know that you guys are on the same playing field. And I think it's distasteful. There's no need to go back and forth with with especially a young woman in that in that regard. I think it's foolishness. Um, another thing that I wanted to say is that, you know, I think it was very um, insightful how she was very excited about Kai Sanat. She talked about Cardi B. She talked about being a rapper. And I think in this day and age, the impact that America, uh, American culture and, and black culture has globally around the world on other places is is insane okay because at this point it's not in a positive light it's in a negative one and that and that doesn't feel good right like that's not that's not something that anybody should be delighted about or happy about especially when the message being pushed is something that you know we wouldn't want to stand for or we wouldn't want to represent us because even her she's talking about the uk and she's like well you know in the uk we have different morals and a different moral compass and just if you look if you take a step back and you look at America as a whole, the way that it is presented um, on a silver platter to everybody else, it looks like this is just a free for all. Anything goes. There's nothing crazy that you can do there. Everybody is crazy. Everybody is wild. You know, it's just and and, and we have to look at ourselves and look in, in our communities and say, is that true? Is that a fair representation of us? I'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' opinions on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.